What's 50 minutes from now? And then the one wizard that you can tap a wizard to gain uh, Okay. And then you just build up a board for or 18. And you just can't do anything. Curse Catcher is a wizard too, so you can tap him and attack him for a spell against him. You are on? I'm going to go uh, make sure they know what they're doing. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for waiting around uh, while we have that manual repair. Always a tournament favorite. Um, so we are on round four, and this is our table one feature match. We have two players, both at 3-0. and We have Cody on Goblins, and we have Stuart on... Esper Wizards. Um, that's definitely definitely a brew of some kind. Um, and we'll see how it plays against the little green guys. That's what we're looking at right now. Uh, so just going over, looking at some of the... Uh, just looking at some of the deck list stuff here. Um, Oh, it's four color wizards. Okay, it is four color wizards. There's a grim lava mancer hanging out. Um, so, just looking at the deck list that I know, um, looking at the goblins list, it does look like there are a couple of um, flex slots. He's playing one Kiki Jiki, one Cranko, one Trash Master, one Goblin Settler. You know, the standard stuff. One Chain Whirler, one Sting Scourger. Nothing. Um, nothing really too crazy out of the goblins pilot but i think we all know what we're really here for we're here to see this four color tribal wizards deck um it really is spicy he's got sower of temptation a zombie lady of scrolls patron wizard dark confidant sage of epiter um we're going to be learning what these cards do together and we'll see how the game goes. It does look like he's on the mulligan to six for game one. And we'll see how it goes from there. I don't even know what to think. Is this Onslaught block or Ravnica? I don't even know what to do. Is this block wars? Um, well, I mean, goblins were definitely an Onslaught block thing. Wizards, though, I think wizards ruled Ravnica plane. So this Ravnica. might be plane wars. Plane not wars. Plane wars. Plane wars. wars. <laughs> Turn one, lackey. Starting it off into turn one, Sage of Epiter. Yeah, there's 0% chance I know any of the cards that Wizards are about to play. These are a bunch of cards I don't know about. I mean, I guess what it is, it's kind of... It's kind of wizard merfolky. A lot of those merfolks happen to be wizards, so a lot of those wizards happen to be merfolk. But having the blocker for the Goblin Lackey, probably the most important thing he could possibly... Oh, thank you so much. Um... He could have done. Does Cody have removal? No. He does not. We might actually see a game here. I've seen many a uh, goblin matchup where it's turn one lackey, turn two removal for your blocker. And the game just ends. And the game just just over. Oh, wow. Wow. Cody, Stu swinging hard with the Umazawa's GTA. I guess we didn't even go over these guys' lists. Um... I don't even know where to start. Stu, the Wizards player, is playing four Aether Rolls, along with four Force of Wills, two Jits, a bunch of Munivals, and then a lot of one of Wizards. Um, Azumi Lady of Scrolls, Venser, Sour of Temptation, Master of Waves, Vendillion Click, Is It Staticaster, four Patron Wizards to lock up the board, and then four Aether, Velkanen Aether Mages to. What I'm guessing is to tutor all of his one of wizards. So that's his going to be his version of uh, Mother of Runes. So we see a goblin matron at a Cody going to get a goblin chain whirler. Um, that card will pull, is, pull a lot of weight in this matchup. A lot of them are kind of X ones. But, you know, as we're going to see here, we're going to most likely get a JIT and a Quip out of the wizards player just to get the JIT online. And then all of a sudden. Your Chain Whirler doesn't kill anything that's equipped to the JIT. Yeah, why would it be a... He has to have it. That just has to be it. Like, he has to have the artifact destruction in his hand. So there's the triple block. He's going to get one dead, two counters. 
And he's down to one land, so I think this kind of forces the, the JIT player's hand to kill the Lackey. Because if the Lackey is unchecked, um, that's really what the, the Goblin Slayer wants. I mean, the Goblin Slayer still has a lot of gas now. Like, this, like the JIT was a problem. There we go. There's a ringleader. That's going to build that to hand. Ringleader, whiff, whiff, and... Oh, wow, that was a Trash Master off the top. Oh, that is huge. I mean, I don't know why he didn't search for the Trash Master. That's still being being my instance. Not that he's in any sort of trouble right now. Um, Stu not having any creatures to equip that Jit to. Here comes the house. He has to kill the Lackey. And he probably just kills a 1-1 one -one token, I'm guessing? No, I think if he's going to keep the jit around, I think you, you have to like play a, some kind of a wizard and then equip it, so that way it doesn't just die to the Chain Whirler. But the problem is that he knows Trash Master's coming down next turn, so like jit is eff effectively dead here. If he has no way to deal with the Trash Master, it is going to and run Stu away is, with Stu this game. stumbling on lands. What, what type of magic would he possibly have here? The, is it Staticaster? Would it be great, but he doesn't have the red mana. He does have a Grim Lava Mancer. Uh, no red mana, so... Still no, run, still no red mana. I'm not saying these are good things. I'm saying these are things <laughs> that he has. It does look like his, his list was definitely more uh, kind of like, like Merfolk style, where it's not hoping to get paired up against this big creature deck. So no creature play out of Stewart, and we're going in again with another ringleader, just building up the hand, getting incremental value out that's of it. That's not incremental. That is massive value. Like that's that's <laughs> a, that's a ringleader. That's a two-two plus two cards in his hand. Um, he doesn't. He has no reason to play the chain whirler at this point. No, He's, I was I was thinking that the the answer would have just been the trash master, but okay. So we're gonna. Fire up a Mutavolt and block. Give it minus one, minus one. Mutavolt's going to hang out for a little longer. Interesting plan. I mean, I'm not sure why Cody doesn't smash for, for everything there. So he needs... He needs a land. <laughs> kind of in the worst way. Kind of in the worst way. I do like how he has all of his cards like aggressively to the left, though. Like he has his library directly in front of him. There's a sage. There's the equip. Unfortunately, do we know what sage actually does? Is that reveal a wizard to put it into your hand or something? I believe it's the. Um, or does it like index? I think it indexes. I believe it's look at four, put them in any order. If I was gonna, if I was gonna take a guess, yes. Look at the top four cards of your library, put them back in any order. It is in fact a. It's a one one. It is a one one. Okay. So it's dead to both cards that he could possibly have. He's just gonna kill it. Is that a gem palm incinerator? Looks like a gem palm incinerator. And this is almost disrespectful, the fact that he hasn't killed the trash master yet. <laughs> or he hasn't he hasn't played the trash master yet. I mean, listen, goblins doesn't normally <laughs> get to flex on a lot of decks, but when you can, you should. Let's go goblins play, or let's come on wizards. Let's see if we can make this interesting. I mean, come to think about it, this is probably one of the worst matchups for wizards. The whole, you have to weather the storm. But goblins is just so good at refilling their hand and just bodying certain strategies. One of those strategies being um, small creatures and equipment. But the thing is, it like... In this instance, I think that these creatures that he's playing, the, the the deck that Stu's brought to the table, is is like you said, more designed like a merfolk strategy, where you're trying to present threats that are good against like co uh, control yeah, type decks. miracles players, miracles and players, combo players, and combo players, and things like that, where like your cards 
the, the incremental value of your cards is just much better than what they're bringing to the table. But like this Goblins player is going to just throw the sink at you. And here it comes. And now there's some hasty ones. They're hasted, they cost less. Okay, we got Videlkin Ethermage. I Be being flashed into play. I know that that flashes. And we have a Mutabolt activation. <laughs> Jim did that thing again, where he stops talking whenever I'm typing. Well, I'm just, I'm focused on the game state, but I don't really have much to say. I'm more curious about how how the Wizards player is going to get out of it. So we lost a land there, and we still haven't drawn a fourth, but we're going to get the Jit active and a Curse Catcher. Same enough, Falcon and Aether Mage, also really good in, in Tribal Wars, just not against Goblins. It does have text of return target Sliver to its owner's hand. Okay. Are we playing any Slivers? I don't think so. Ooh, you can return a Mutavolt. You could remove a Mutavolt. I think that's just useless text 101. Okay. So Stu Grinch with the equipped Jit at this point. Cody with a fistful of cards trying to figure out what to do. And his, his opponent's at 10. Like, if we look at this board state, if he just plays Trash Master and says, I'm going to kill your Jit, what does he do? He, he eats two creatures? We're still not playing the Trash Master. We're extra not playing a Trash Master. Yeah, we're going to get a card that should be Trash Master, <laughs> but the Trash Master's already in our hand. I mean, it could also be... Um, he doesn't have a second Trash Master. Crater Maker. Is Crater Maker a card? He does play three Goblin Crater Makers, yeah. Maybe he could just play Crater Maker. I don't know why you would feed cards to the JIT, though. Yeah, and, not, and not immediately into the game. We got a Crater Maker. We have it. We have it, guys. We have the second answer to JIT. That's still on the table. Yes. Ex existing. But he's at three? That can't be right, is it? I mean, the game's just over? I mean, he has been clocking them at yeah. every turn. So, I mean, he's he, he's at seven, effectively, with the jet counters. Yes. But. so the jet counters need, are also needed to kill things. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see a way out of this. Yeah, we're packing it up. Okay, okay. going to game two. Let's play. Let's play the sideboard game. What sideboard does game? The super aggressive goblins player do. Okay, so I think that pyroblast is good. I think that pyrokinesis is good. Um, I really don't see a world where I'd bring in chalice of the void. He is a four color mana base. It could be a blood moon, a blood moon coming out of the sideboard. Um, goblin sharpshooter also seems really good. I think I would bring in a Goblin Sharpshooter here. From the Wizards player, I would say he has absolutely nothing to bring in. Except maybe an Echoing Truth. This just doesn't seem like anything he was prepared for. He is not ready to face down the Big Red Menace. Nope. Sometimes you make deck choices that are good for the, de for the day, and other times you play Videlkin Ethermage. And you get Goblin Lackey. And you get Goblin Lackey. So I do know there's a lot of hype coming up for Goblins. They are getting a lot of help from this new set to be relevant again. I mean, I do know there are some AZ natives that uh, believe Goblins is more than playable right now. Yep. Um, hashtag because Hadley and Dan Ford. And obviously Cody Gormlex. But with the new set coming out, I do know they're being pushed more into black. There is a four cost goblin sharpshooter that I know of. There is a two cost non cycling essentially incinerator incinerator that's going to come into play. Um, you're trading the card draw for a body. Yep. And I can't remember what else if chat wants to help out. 
but I know that Goblins gets a little bit more streamlined and definitely a second color in the next set. Yeah. So you may see them push away from cards like Richard Import um, in favor of the more flexible black red mana base. But that, that's really it. I, I mean, I think that the the mono red version of the deck is is very powerful, and you'll have to test some games with the new cards in order to see if they actually increase the power of the deck. Um, on paper, I don't think that they do. I think that everything that the Goblins deck already does is just going to be a better version of what they're going to be trying to do with the new cards. But we'll wait and see, because it's definitely going to be tested here in Arizona. We have three really prolific goblin players that only play goblins so we'll see what they have to offer yeah most definitely i do think you're you're playing you're forgetting about age revival i mean most of the got most of the time they're not playing paying the black mana for the cards um it's just an act an act of vial gets everything else done but then you still get to do the poor Wasteland player that is so strong in so many matchups. Yeah. Okay, we are sideboarding. Apparently Cody has some hard decisions to make. Stu looks like he's ready to go. That's an aggressive F6 before the game starts. Double hands on the table, so Stu looks like he can get with, off to a much better start. Definitely land Jit would be preferable, but he needs to be able to establish his mana base, getting free creatures with Uzama's Jite, or with Aether Vial, allows him to do things like move a Jit around much easier, activate those Muta Vaults. For removal, it's still light. He's gonna need a Grim Lava Mancer fast. Do you think he brings in the dazes? I think it slows him down too much. Maybe if... Then there's also the idea that if he has Vile or Cavernous Souls, it could just be a dead card. But a lot of the cards in his main deck just don't really pack enough mustard. So if Daze is good, it might be better. I mean, I don't think Daze is playable in this matchup. Cody's playing one, I'm guessing, some number of Cavernous Souls. Yes, four of them. One, four of them. Four Aether Vials. So he has eight cards that makes Days Erru not have text yeah. on it. So I don't know why even considering bringing in Days would be an issue. Like I mean, I mean, Stu had to have made a hard look at uh, taking out his Force of Wills. I agree. Like remove four Force of Wills, put in one Echoing Truth, one Reflector Mage. And then I'm not really sure what else after that. I don't know what Stern Proctor does. Um, Stern Can we get a card check, please? Uh, Stern Proctor, I believe, is, is it? It's blue, blue, blue. Draw a card. I think it's blue, blue, blue. Blue, blue, blue. Draw a card is what I'm. Is what my guess is. No, no, no. It's blue, blue. Return target artifact or enchantment. So that can come in. Okay. To bounce the aforementioned Aether Vial. Yep. And also just be a body. Looks like we got a mulligan out of the Goblins player. See what's cooking on the other side. It's probably the best thing that Stu could have done is force his opponent to mulligan. Yes. But he's still just hard F6ing. Cody really admiring his own shuffling skills. I'm going to do a light walk around the room in case we need a uh, backup feature match. Sounds good. See you soon. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we kept on six for the Goblins player. And the Wizards player is contemplating his opening seven, but it does look like that he kept. Fetch land to start things off for Stu. And as you can see on the bottom of his deck, he did bring the dazes in. So I don't know. You know, obviously, 
we've talked about what needs to be done here, but let's see what we got. We got Land Ethervile for the for the Wizards player, and then we have Land and an Ethervile for the Goblins player. So maintaining parity. for the Wizards player. Let's see, we've got a much slower game here. But I do think that the slower game favors the Goblins player because his cards are going to do more in the long run. There are going to be more Goblins, there's going to be more um, ringleaders, more matrons, things of that nature, where the Wizards deck doesn't really pack that kind of a punch. So we'll have to wait and see what's going on with that. Etherile takes up to two, and we drew an Umazawa's Jit for the turn. That was a huge draw. Volume's low. Let's see if I can raise it up a little bit. Well, I'm sitting pretty far away from the snowball. Is that is that better? Still low. Okay. They're complaining that the volume's too low. Well, we did ask about a thousand times if the volume was too low, and everyone said it was good. So there you go. How about that? Volume check. Coming at you. Do do volume check. Do do volume check. All right. So what you've missed is Ooh. they've both been doing ethervial stuff, but we did get a sneak peek at the bottom of Stu's grave, uh, Stu's library when he was polluted deltaing, and there was a daze there. So interesting that he did bring that in. A little better. Okay. You did bring the days in. They are now dead. Let's just go back to that part with the active Aether Vial. Yep. We well, have a Jit on the field. Siege Gang Commander. So we have Vial on three, so we have a Matron in our hand. Technically, we have our entire deck. What I'm thinking is that we just get Matron for the Trash Master and make the Trash Master and kill the Jit. Like, the Jit's really the only way that he's getting... Yeah, but you want to play the Trash Master with Goblins on the board, so you're not sacrificing the Trash Master. But he would have the Matron. Yeah, but Goblins. You want to get rid of the Vial and the... Something fell off the... There's a box. Because now there's a lot more glare. Yeah. The glare is back, ladies and gentlemen. The glare is back. You know what you're trying to do. You're probably you're not saying you're wrong, because I'm not sure how he gets out of an active, an active jit with an active vial, and he has to. He only plays off of the. He only plays off of the vial now, right? Because that's a patron wizard, which means he's countering anything he wants. Yep. Tap three wizards counter Tap a spell. Tap three wizards counter a spell. So he he's only playing off of. Um, eighth of Isle now. Yep. There's the Sage. Sage is going in. Counters on. Killing the Chieftain? I mean, I think you kill anything that's on the board. He has three Wizards ready for Patron Wizard. Or anything that is not named Cash Master, which should come in off the vial now. You can't let the JIT get out of control. Yeah, but the thing is that it, it, his only way of getting to the Trash Master is the, um, the Matron. The Matron, which he's just going to counter it. Oh, wait, he, he can't counter it. 
because oh no he can make mutavault a wizard and then tap yes. it to patron wizard there's that oh it's the it, that's the days one that's not the okay. counter it one so matron's gonna resolve we have Ethervile on four. So now it's Trashmaster. It has to be. Now it's Trashmaster. Out of all the times I think you were not right last time, this has to be Trashmaster. Trashmaster. Kill the Vile. Kill the Jit. Move on with your life, Cody. I mean, there is an argument where he jits the chieftain in response. That's fine. He still sacrifices the... Yeah. Yep. There yep. it is. Yeah, you still get the trash master. Trash master should snap kill something. Vile. Dark Confidant reveals another Dark Confidant. He's got a sower of temptation in his hand for that vial on four. So if we do see an activation of the Trash Master, we might see a sower in response. To take the... To take the Trash Master. But the thing is... sacrifice the track ma Trash Master to kill the vial. Yes. Yes. So he's going to do it first. Yeah, I think you, you, so you sack, sack both, both to kill both. To kill both, yeah. Cody is running out of cards in his hand. He is uh, doing the opposite of what happened last game. What you'd have to say is uh, courtesy of the Dark Confidants on one side. Yeah. I mean, how good would Sharpshooter be right now? Uh, it would, shouldn't resolve. The wizards are growing. He's got another Ether Violin. What's that white border card in his hand? Well, it's a Dark Confidant, and he doesn't have a white border card in his hand. It's a wizard. Oh, over there. For Cody? For Cody, no yeah. No idea. <laughs> Void Mage Prodigy. Now they're actually super countered. That just came into play. <laughs> so Void Bench Prodigy is Sacrifice a Wizard, hard counter spell. Yes. So now he has lots of little four spikes and hard counter spells out. So if he has an answer for the GTA or the Aether Vial, life gets significantly easier. Let's see. This board is, is pretty pretty much dominated by the Wizards player. I wonder how much longer this game is going to go on. That's nah, not going to do it. Yeah, that's fine. He's just going to force spike it for no reason. I'm a fan of that. <laughs> Let's it tie. <laughs> a powerful force spike. What is that card? Goblin Settler. Oh, okay. Destroy a land. Yep. The ultimate combo with Kiki Jiki. You probably should have destroyed an untapped blue source. I guess you should didn't matter. And there's the force spike. There's the counter spell. That's brutal. See this guy try to cheat? Swing with his solid temptation? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'd want to say that Stu turned the corner here, but it wasn't really so much as Stu turned the corner as much as Cody didn't. Yeah. Goblin I mean, player just kind of dirtled out. 
the goblin player with zero cards in his hand is, is kind of a feels bad. Yeah, I mean, it's about just like the red player we saw. Yeah. A while ago, once you, once you, if you can survive the initial onslaught of the little red men. We have, he has another sage in his hand. I think Let's, his hand is sage, sage, dark confidant. It's really just going to be the overwhelming amount of card advantage, though. That's going to get there. Yeah. The attack kills trades with the confidant, which he does have a backup in his hand. There's the sage leaving up counter spell mana. See if we can get that glare fixed again. Alright, so this looks to be the last draw of the game for the Goblins player. Well, is it a ringleader? No, what is that card? I don't know what that card is. That might be a ringleader. Yep. One ringleader and scoop up the cards. Okay. And go into three. Move into game three. Okay, going back to three, I'd like to see those dazes not be there. <laughs> well, I mean, definitely on the draw, they're not as good. But in that game, funny thing about that game is the daze would have been great because he went land vile and his opponent went land vile. If he just had the daze there, that game would have ended far, far earlier than it actually did because the vile did a lot of the heavy lifting in that matchup for both players. But that's, but, that's the whole point is if once the vile resolves four cards your deck are dead. Yes, that's true. That is that's facts. It does look like Stu is siding out four cards, so the Force of Wills are coming back in and the Daisies are coming out, just like we thought. I don't even think the Force of Wills are Force of Wills are not good in this matchup. I would no. never want a two for one myself against a Dougie Goblins player. No. I mean, it is a huge answer against that term on Lackey that he does not have removal for. No. I mean, the turn one lackey into removal for whatever blocker he plays is still the game over play. One echoing truth is all he has. Yeah, but there's just a lot of sequences that the echoing truth is not going to get it done. There's... No, there's sequences that the echoing truth doesn't get it done. That is the only answer he has that's not a creature or a force of will to goblin lackey. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not going to get it done. I think this deck is is poorly positioned against the Goblins matchup, but to be honest with you, as as a Miracles player, every card that he's played so far this match has scared me. Dark Confidant, bad. Patron Wizard, bad. <laughs> Mutable, bad. <laughs> yeah, Stu definitely wishes he was playing Miracles right now. He's playing like the big brother version of the old school fish decks. Yes. Which was Cloud of Fairies, Spike Dale Hatchlings, Day's Force of Will, and Attack You to Death, and Winter Orbs. And just try to attack you to death with 1-1s one before you could do anything about it. But back then, the only sweeper in the game was Wrath of God at 4 mana. Really, the only card most decks had to be scared of was getting to Wrath mana. Yeah. Which is where Goblins established his initial dominance through Wasteland and Ports and never letting the blue white players get to four. Yeah. Okay, shuffling up, going to three. They have about 15 minutes left. Yeah, I had, I had some in my room. Yeah, I had some in my room. 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 I had some
Would you make any changes going into this if you were the Goblin player? No, I think your your configuration doesn't really change much on the play or the draw. Um, I think that he should keep in the cards that are the most impactful. I think that Goblin Sharpshooter is really good. Pyroblast, Pyrokinesis, all good. Um, so it's a. Uh, it's just dependent on how the quality of his hand lines up compared to the quality of the Wizards player's hand. Um, so, er, early thoughts is, I do see a force of will in Stewart's hand. So, he has the answer for the turn one lackey or the turn one vial. And let's see how this lines up. We got turn one vial out of the goblin player. It's going to resolve. into turn one stage of Epiter. That is in fact a blocker. But and, it's he, and he has done what he needed to do, which is survive the turn one Goblin Mackey. Yeah, but the, it, it confuses me that, like, does he not think that the vial has enough value to warrant Force of Will? Because that to me is like the the preeminent card. Because now, look, now your Force of Will's, it's, it's dead. Your Force of Will is, is a mulligan. Well, and you were the one that said bring daisies in. <laughs> no, I was just for specifically for that iteration where you're on the play and you can counter a vial. That's it. Well, I mean, he was on the play and could have countered the vial. He was on the draw. He was on the draw and could have countered a vial. Didn't. Didn't. Cho chose not to. Maybe he has an answer for it. Maybe he's better than us. There's a reason we're casting and he's playing. And this does look like it's going to be... The reason you have to force a will that vial is because of this... I was going to say... Wasteland that we're about to see. I think there I Wasteland the Cavern of Souls and pass with Vile Up. Is that it? Do I see Kiki Jiki the Mirror Breaker in his hand? There, is, that, there is a Kiki Jiki. There's a Kiki Jiki and a Goblin Settler. Okay. So I mean I think there is a very real reason where if he was just aggressively Wastelanding and not letting this happen that he gets Kiki Jiki Settler and locks him out of lands. Yeah, I think this oh, is a huge third mistake. third game in a row, Cody's going to let Stu have Jit counters. He has to have the answer for this file, though. I, I just can't imagine this being the right line of play. Here's four. This will be the settler. Well, the chieftain makes it cost one less, so it's only three. Oh, so it's but only three. See, he has Port Wasteland up. I just don't. He's not doing the goblin thing of. Spring leader. That's a chieftain, or that's a not the one that makes it cost one. Oh, less. that's the one that's plus that's one plus one, one in plus haste. One, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, ringleader is good here. If it if it sneaks through, maybe we hit like a sharpshooter or a matron or something. And oh, we hit a we hit a war chief. And another ringleader. So, Warchief is going to come down. That's where Cody's just going to go wide. I mean, the Jit's going to make it difficult, but if you just draw a lot of creatures, you I can mean, just overwhelm a Jit. He is, pre yeah, he is presenting. He's going to present four damage here this turn. It would have been well. It's four damage. It would have been eight. Another one dies. So that's four. He's going to attack. He's going to kill another goblin. Like, the stew kind of has a little abyss. And as long as Cody draws hot and just can continually tap out and go from there. But going back to what I was saying, he has Wasteland Port with Vial. Stu shouldn't be doing anything. Like, this is the slow it down game plan that I always talk about. Yes. When you're playing lands. This is exactly what's going on. Like You could have had him pinched to one mana this whole time. Yes. He could have been pinched this entire time. He wouldn't have an active jit yet, I'm guessing. And you have your vial doing vile things. Like that's how you get your the, the huge mana advantage as goblins. Let's see a sower of temptation here. There's the sower. Ooh, okay. Pyrokinesis. Here we go. Yeah, so read the pyrokinesis. Um, he's probably doing it after the sour 
takes the creature, he's going to clear it. He's going to clear the board and get the creature back. This is probably Force of Will Ball. I think this is Force of Will Ball, yeah. As much as you don't want a Force of Will. There's one goblin over. Gets turned to the appropriate side. <laughs> And now there's jig counters again. Yeah. So we, we've we abyssed him down to zero permanence effectively again. Jim, we've got a reader. <laughs> we do know he has the Kiki Jiki Goblin Settler. So the higher that... That's a Siege of Epiter. And I can't spell that. E P I T Y R. Yeah, there you go. Oh man, is that the Trash Master again? Going ringleader. So this is gonna be one of those good. This is one of those good ringleaders, where it just hits anything. I'm pretty sure that he drew the Trash Master. The Trash Master. I'm, yeah, I see it in his hand. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, we got he, he knows. Goblin Lackey 1 in the group chat for the Goblins match. <laughs> you were watching in the 3 0 bracket Tribal Wars, Wizards versus Goblins. Plane at Wars. Table 1. Oh, there is the Trash Master. So he removed the two Jit counters and killed the ringleader in response. And then we got an attack for two off the other ringleader. So... Stu, really wishing he was playing any form of mass creature removal. Or creature control. Comes in hot. Here's the thing, though. What I'm really excited is that we are going to get next turn if we because we're gonna deal with this jit i honestly think we sack the trash master to kill the jit and then next turn we tick up the vial to five play the kiki jiki and start copying goblin ringleader and that game is over see you're obviously not a uh, non-blue player because the correct play is to play a goblin settler kill the mutapol he removed goblin settler, settler from the pyrokinesis Ooh, did he yes Ooh. so the goblin settler, settler is gone i would love that line but i'm thinking about drawing six cards a turn <laughs> as the no, goblin I mean, sacking, as the mono red deck sacking, drawing six cards a turn sacking the he let him have counters what what is going on he's not he has shown zero respect for jit counters this entire time Maybe he really wants your play, where he's not sacking the ringleader. He wants to copy him. But well, no, the, I think he should sack this trash master to itself. No, but I'm saying, like, I mean, he he doesn't want to sack the trash master. He doesn't want to sack the ringleader. He wants to put the Kiki Jiki in and copy the ringleader and then set. But the Kiki Jiki's gonna die. Well, the Kiki Jiki is a three-three because the trash master, so okay, it doesn't okay, die. Okay, so it's not gonna die. Oh, Trash Master's good. Yeah. I mean, you you can put the you can put the Kiki Jiki into play and then you can kill the kill the jit. And then he has a jump bomb incinerator that he got from the last ringleader. So there's the Kiki Jiki. Yeah. Which is the top of the goblin curve. Yes. Top of the goblin proverbial food chain. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm seeing in my head is copying ringleader drawing a bunch of cards and then we're going to Goblin Lackey is is saying that if he just used Kiki to copy Trash Master then Gempom the Sour he just does just have lethal which is probably also true he does also just have a lot of creatures in play <laughs> It was just a bad experience all around. If it happened to be a central land, you could have fetched away, but 
Then I would have hit it. Goblin seems to be in a great place here. He does, in fact, copy the ring later. Nature and ringleader, trash master. Oh, wow. Just draws four cards. Listen, if anybody's Twitch handle is Goblin Lackey One, I trust that they know what they're doing. We're not. I'm not saying anything's wrong here. There's a lot of plays that this Goblin player could make, and it looks like a lot of them are going to be successful. Frankie, I believe is. I think he's three and one. He was two one last time I checked. Did we see? We saw Frankie lose, right? No, Frankie beat um, Blue White Omni. Frankie did win the matchup we saw, so Frankie is doing good. He lost round one, and I think he he's at least 2-1. I don't know if he's 3-1, because we haven't gotten the last result yet. So, uh, it looks like he drew another incinerator. And here we come across for six, putting the screws to... Frankie, Frankie's temp temporarily MIA. So this was great. He drew another incinerator. So he incinerated the, the seller again, got it back, and now he's attacking for six into it, and he's going to be able to sack the goblin to the trash master to kill the jit. That's well, the copy of the Kiki, the Kiki Jiki copy. Yes. Oh man. I so he, he couldn't have made. A, there was not a lot of bad decisions she could make here. He's firmly in the driver's seat. Turner and Stu is, does not have. There you go. And there's the hand. Yes. Goblin takes it two to one. I don't think there was a lot Stu could do. Stu just no. does not have the removal for this. Like no sort of supply shares. No fatal pushes. No. He plays black. Yeah. No. Um, Record. Frankie Rodriguez is two and two. The crowd wanted to know. The crowd. Yes. Rish, Rish the mage wanted to know. Oh. Um. Yeah. He just doesn't. He brought a knife to a gunfight. You know. He did not bring removal. To a goblin's me. <laughs> to a goblin's. To a goblin's man. Um, we will see what we still have going on, and if we can, we'll see you guys in round five.